Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Mari. I'm one of the librarians at Portland Public Library in Portland, Maine, and I'm here today to read you another picture book biography to celebrate Black History Month. Today we're going to be reading My Story, My Dance, Robert Battle's Journey to Alvin, at Alvin Alley. This book is written by Lisa Clyde Ransom and illustrated by James E. Ransom, with a foreword by the actual person this book is about, Robert Battle. Let's look at the end pages. There are these beautiful sketches of people dancing. My Story, My Dance. This book is published by Simon and Schuster Books for young readers. And here is a foreword by Clive, or so by Robert, excuse me. You can see a picture of him when he was young, a picture of him doing martial arts, a picture of him dancing, and another picture of him. Let's go ahead and read his story. It was a blue sky Sunday on the day he was born. Hot Jacksonville sun greeted a brown-skinned, bright-eyed, bow-legged boy named Robert. It was August 1972 and folks headed out to church service, banding themselves to cool down in the Florida heat. But Robert's uncle Willie and Aunt Anna made their way across town to meet the brand new baby nephew. Times were tough for Robert's mama Marie. When Robert was, as Uncle Willie described, no bigger than a bread loaf, he and Aunt Anna took Robert in. When Aunt Anna became sick, the three of them packed up and headed south to Miami to be closer to Anna and Willie's daughter, Robert's cousin, Desi. In the little house in the Liberty City neighborhood, Desi was waiting with a down-home family welcome. Desi taught English, wrote poetry, played piano in the church, and loved Robert like her own. On the front porch, when his mama Desi practiced with her performance group, the Afro-Americans, Robert watched. When they sang spirituals, Robert hummed along, and when they recited the poetry of Mari Evans and Maya Angelou, Robert listened. On his Mama Desi's rehearsal days, there was no place he'd rather be. On Sundays, when the choir sang, Robert sang like a bird in a sweet soprano while Mama Desi played hymns, uh, played hymns on the piano. This is my story, this is my song, praising my savior all day long. After the service and Sunday supper, Robert sat at the piano and filled his house with music. He was too shy to play in front of Miss Vanita, his piano teacher, but when he was alone, his fingers glided across the keys as he happily made up his own songs. In the evening, heavy metal braces that he wore to straighten his legs slowed Robert to a stop. For years, Robert felt the pain and heard the clank of metal whenever he moved his legs. Trying to walk, he fell down time and time again until finally his legs got straighter and stronger. When he was six, his braces came off and Robert strode into the pulpit of Wachter Temple AMZ Zion Church dressed in a fine Easter suit. He looked out and saw his mama Desi and Uncle Willie and the faces of everyone in the church family. He took a deep breath and recited a poem his mama Desi had taught him. My name is Robert Battle. I stand six feet tall, and I just came to say, Happy Easter Day. Amen, said the congregation, when Robert returned to his seat, and he blushed with pride. In that moment, Robert knew that being on stage gave him confidence that he never knew he had. Back at home, his living floor became a stage lit with the smiles of his Uncle Willie and Mama Desi. Robert saw shoot like Fred Astaire and moonwalked like Michael Jackson. The world is a stage, he sang in his best Broadway voice. The stage is a world of entertainment. Outside of the comfort of church and the haven of home, Robert was called names that hurt worse than his leg braces ever had. His mama Desi wanted him to be safe on the Liberty City streets, so at age 12, Robert began to study martial arts. He spent hours practicing katas, his arms and legs slicing through the airs, his feet stepping and stomping. 
Now when he walked the streets of Liberty City, Robert felt safe, safer, imagining that he was a black belt warrior like Bruce Lee. He found calm in the discipline and courage of his growing strength. But the best part was that karate sounded like music and felt like dancing. Be what you... Be that what you is. Don't try to be what you ain't, his Uncle Willie said when Robert told him and his mama Desi he wanted to dance. And not just like Gene Kelly and Bill Bojangles Robinson. He wanted to dance like the kids from his school who practiced turns and positions. He wanted to dance ballet. At 13, Robert waited nervously for his first lesson to begin. He was much older than many of those in his class. Loose and limber from karate, Robert's lean frame easily maneuvered through the warm-ups at the African Heritage Cultural Center on Miami's 22nd Avenue. At the bar, Robert glided through his plies, releves, porte bras and coupes. When the music began to play, Robert's heart began to race. As a freshman at Miami Northwestern High School, Robert signed up for the after-school dance program. He'd been dancing for two years at the art center, and he knew that most dancers started training before they were five years old. In his classes, Robert was the first to arrive and the last to leave. He knew he had a lot of catching up to do. Miss Munez, a former New York City ballet dancer and a partner in Miami's Caracas ba Ballet, strode into the dance studio small and serious. As she began their first lesson, something about the tall young man in the back row caught her eye. Robert had something special. She filled his arms with dance magazines and books on ballet. On days off, she made Robert come in for private lessons, and on Saturday, she drove him to extra classes at the Ballet Academy of Miami. He didn't have time to moan about his aching muscles and groan about wearing tights. During a break, Robert finally got up the nerves to ask the question that had been on his mind. Do you think I can be the first black Barishkinov? he asked, shyly hoping hoping someday to perform like the famed Russian ballet dancer he had seen on television and magazines. You can be whatever you want to be, Miss Munez told him, and turned the music on to resume his lesson. Robert boarded the bus with his dance class. They were on their way to see a dance company performing in Miami Beach. Once they were settled on their seats and the lights were dimmed, Robert's eyes never left the stage. In piece after piece, the dancers, all in shades of brown, moved powerfully, gracefully across the stage. And when the relevations final began, they all moved as one to a mournful spiritual. Rock my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Rock my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Rock my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Oh, rock my soul. From his seat, Robert felt their pain, their joy, their sorrow and hope. On stage, he saw his mama, Desi, Uncle Willie, and Aunt Anna, Miss Juanita, the members of his congregation at Wacker Temple AMC, and the Alvin Alley Dance Company. Robert saw his past, his future, and he saw himself. The New World School of Dance of the Arts, New World School of Arts in Miami was holding auditions for high school students, and Robert was not going. I'm going to stay here with you, he told Miss Munoz, feeling she was the best dance teacher he could ever have. Robert finished his rehearsal, but Miss Munoz was waiting. You're going to the New World School of the Arts, and I don't want to talk about it. They worked day and night on his audition piece, perfecting his jumps and turns, and when the day finally arrived, Robert worried he'd forget everything he learned. But when Robert received an acceptance letter, he felt as light as he had when his leg braces first came off. During his two years at New World, Robert not only grew in inches to a full six feet tall, he also grew in technique with the help of his teacher, Jerry Houlihan. Gently, she encouraged him and taught and pushed Robert's dancing until his movements felt as natural to him as breathing. In the New World dance studio, soaking in music and dripping with sweat, he had never felt more at home. Take care of yourself, boy. Remember that head's not just a place to hang a hat, Uncle Willie instructed. Robert was going to miss his family, but he knew it was time to go. In his final year at New World, he auditioned for and received a full scholarship to the school he'd only read about in dance magazines. His mama, Desi, sat in the car waiting to take him to the airport. Robert was off to New York to dance at Juilliard School. 
filled with the world's most promising actors, musician, and dancer, Juilliard sat between Amsterdam and Broadway on West 65th Street. In August of 1990, Robert arrived loaded with suitcases and fears about whether all the training he received back in Florida would be enough in New York. When he began creating his own dances, he listened over and over to critiques and criticism, but, it, but from his teachers, Bessie Schoenberg, Elizabeth Keene, and Benjamin Harkavy, he learned that dance was a way to tell his own story. Robert told his story in the pieces he created and in his own dance performances. His choreography won the Princess Grace and Martha Hill Awards. When he graduated from Juilliard and was invited to join the Parsons Dance Company in New York City, he brought with him pieces of home and memories of family. He choreographed The Hunt, where dancers kicked and chopped, just like he had long ago in karate class. Inside captured all of his fear as a young boy in Liberty City. And then Strange Humors, the dancers told all the stories of all the nights his leg braces had made it difficult to walk. In 2001, Robert began his own dance company, Battleworks. Soon his new company was performing to rave reviews from state to state. Judith Jameson was the artistic director of Alvin Ali da American Dance Theater when she saw Robert's Mood Indigo and she wanted her own company to feature it. Robert's future lay with Ali. On a blue summer day, 10 years and 11 dances later, Robert began as the new artistic director of Alvin Alley. As Robert stepped on stage in the crowded theater on July 1st, 2011, he looked out and imagined the faces of his mama Desi, Uncle Willie, and Aunt Anna. Miss Juanita, the congreg congregation at Walker Temple, AMC, Miss Munez, Jerry Houlihan, his Juilliard teachers, and Judith Jameson. In the audience, he saw his past, his present, and his future, and he saw himself. Robert stepped forward, opened his arms to the audience, and welcomed each and every one like family. Here in the back, we have acknowledgments or thank yous, the author's note, the illustrator's note, and a bibliography of all of the sources that were used to create this book. Remember, we've talked about sources are really important when you're talking about a factual book. There's a website for the Alvin Alley American Dance Theater and some further reading that you can do. And there are more beautiful illustrations on the back end page. I hope you really enjoyed this book and learning about Robert Battle, a amazing dancer who is working very recently. 2011 was only 10 years ago. So it's um, it was very close and you can learn that not all black history is a long time ago. A lot of it is happening right now. I hope you enjoyed this book. Is there anything that um, inspires you? Anything about your history that makes you want to dance or paint or art or sing or write poems or create crafts? It could be anything. Let me know. My name is Sarah Mari. I'm one of the librarians at Portland Public Library in Portland, Maine. I hope you enjoyed today's story and I'll see you soon for another one. Bye.